Hey Chandlers, it's Sequoia with the Chase Street Renaissance and I wanted to leave a little video. I actually just got home from uh, taking my daughter to the mall to have her spend like her tooth. This kid le loses a tooth like every other day. So she got dough. She had like $60. <laughs> she had like $60 to spend. So we took her to the mall to go spend her bread. Anyways, I wanted to leave a quick video and if I keep looking off to my right your left, it's because I have notes over there because I wrote this stuff down really quick and I wanted to kind of give a different perspective on um, how testing your candles will be different from the next person. So if you're in a lot of these Facebook groups, just keep in mind that when you ask questions, um, bottom line is you should do your own testing and come up with your own results. You might like the results that you get and you know, ask, you've asked that question a million times and gotten a million different answers from everyone in you know whatever group you're in but then you go ahead and test it and you're like oh well that didn't happen to me and I actually like these results. I know what I'm looking for when I test for my candles and um, the the hot throw should not be affected by that. So like I said if I keep looking off to my right it's because I have notes there and I just want to make sure that I cover everything and that I'm making sense and I'm not rambling. So the first thing is like I said everyone's testing is going to yield different results. Um, I've seen questions in the group like how do, um, well, it's okay to ask these questions, you know, how does wooden wick, would the wooden wick co sells, um, a virgin coconut soy and a cocoa apricot, um, wax. And I was actually a week ago years old <laughs> when I realized that all, um, waxes for the most part have the same, well, all, I shouldn't say for the most part all waxes are um, composed of the same ingredients and then just different sellers sell those, different suppliers sell those waxes. So if you get um, cocoa apricot from let's say 1617, it could be called something different. I think they call it um, a Lux cocoa apricot, something of that nature. And then the Wooden Wick Co calls it cocoa apricot creme. And it's the same wax, just with a different name and maybe from different uh, bulk suppliers, but the bottom line is it's the same wax, you know, same ingredients. And if you buy from one and then decide to buy from the next, you should get the same results. So with my testing, I actually make candles in my garage and right now I'm living in Oklahoma. Well, it gets very windy here and the weather seems to be a bit up and down. So one of the conversations I had in one of the candle groups that I'm in was someone telling me to just kind of be careful with leaving my candles outside because, you know, the up and down in temperature could cause some distortion with the candles that I've already made and, um, you know, some shrinkage and cause the wax to pull away from the vessel. Well, I actually haven't had those issues and my candles are right there behind me. Um, this is actually one that I made. Um, this is a vessel from, ooh, where's this vessel from? This is from Dream Vessels. I actually don't order these vessels anymore, personal preference, but um, this is actually IGI 6006, which is mostly paraffin. It's a paraffin soy blend, but I, you know, it's not shaking around in the jar. I haven't gotten any shrinkage with it. And it is a pretty, um, I don't want to say old candle, but it's been sitting here for well over a month. Um, and I haven't had any issues. And we've had some pretty extreme cold weather here. So that hasn't been an issue for me. So your testing environment and things like that will make a difference in your results. But that doesn't mean that your results are going to be you know, breaking any rules. Um, just like that person told me that I should be careful with distortion and leaving my wax um, out in the garage. I haven't had any issues with that. So just because someone says something, don't let that scare you away from um, what you're doing. I don't have anywhere else in my house to make candles. Um, I don't have a spare bedroom or office to call my own to make candles. So I make candles in my garage. Um, and obviously I don't pour when it's extremely cold because number one, I'm not coming out here and working when it's cold. Um, but that's just something that I do. Um, what's the next thing? Now, the next thing that I read in one of these groups was someone saying that um, they asked uh, what kind of wax they prefer, the virgin coconut soy or the cocoa apricot 
um, wax from Wooden Wick Co. Now I tried both. Um, I bought five pounds. They, I wish I had one right in front of me, but it comes in a sm fairly small box and it comes in five pound slabs if you want to just test it. And I did test both. Um, I wasn't a fan of the virgin coconut soy. I personally don't like working with waxes that I absolutely have to wait two weeks before I gain a hot throw. I think me, this is just me. I think it's pretty ridiculous <laughs> for me to have to wait two weeks just to find out if the candle smells like anything or is going to smell like anything. Um, and there's ways obviously to not waste wax and not waste wicks. I'm not saying make a full candle with a with a perfectly good wick and fragrance oil and then wait two weeks and then test, you know, an 11 ounce candle just to find out it doesn't smell like anything. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I don't have the patience for it, but that's my personal preference. Um, so the the comments that were under this thread were um you know people saying that you know i've tried this and you know cocoa apricot takes too long to gain a hot throw etc cetera, etc cetera. well my testing proved to me that cocoa apricot um actually gave me an amazing hot throw with every fragrance oil that i've tested within 24 to 48 hours now Two weeks, sure, my, my hot throw is going to be even more amazing. But in a day or two, I was able to not only smell that candle right away, but I was able to test it and see how well it was going to fill a room. It would most likely fill that room even better in two weeks, but at least I had an idea. Um, so that's why I chose to, su to stick with the cocoa apricot. Um, so do cure times really matter? This is kind of the next thing. Um, that is going to be completely up to you, your wax and your testing. Cure times matter. Me, in my opinion, they don't matter a hundred percent of the time. Okay. So now follow me. I got two fragrance oils here. Now this is my, now I haven't done any research on this, so this might absolutely be, you know, actual factuals and I just am, you know, having my own common sense and maybe this is like real talk somewhere. I'm not really sure, but I have blueberry cobbler from Lone Star and I have stress relief from the flaming candle. Both of these smell amazing. I've made candles with this, with both of these. Blueberry cobbler is powerful. Stress release, a little bit more zen, but still um, a good candle. Fragrance oil is measured in weight and not volume. So they're not going to fill these bottles up to the same level. What I did notice, I almost dropped it. What I did notice is that blueberry cobbler is a lot thicker, is a lot thicker of an oil than stress relief. So your oils like blueberry cobbler and maybe like your more fruit, um, not necessarily fruity scents, but like your bakery scents, I've noticed are a little bit thicker than something that's going to be, you know, eucalyptus and sage and things like that that also i think plays a factor in how well your hot throw is going to be if you have more of those watery scents and fragrance oils it might take that fragrance two weeks to kind of really settle into the wax um and and to gain a hot throw. The blueberry cobbler, I smelled right away. I poured the candle, I let it set, came back a couple of hours later, knocked my socks off. Two weeks later, still the same thing, same result, knocked my socks off. Stress relief on the other hand, um, I think one of the notes in there is definitely eucalyptus. Um, it was one of those things that kind of had to build. So plan for that also when you're picking your wax, um, if you're going for something that, you know, more of those stronger scents, if you're trying to reach people that like those stronger scents that linger throughout their whole house, then try to find those fragrance oils that you think are going to be a little bit thicker. I really hope this is making sense because it makes sense to me. <laughs> and I'm like, man, I really hope that people are thinking the same way that I am. So like I said, I just wanted to give you guys a different perspective. Um, another thing is wicking your um vessels 
I started out with 6006 and EcoWix because I saw someone else was using EcoWix. I absolutely hate I take that back. I started out with 6006 and HTP Wix because I like I said because I saw someone else um, in a video that was using HTP Wix and 6006 and they swore by it so I tried it because you know you you learn these things from other people and you try to cut down testing time well I did that and I hated HTP Wix I hated the soot I hated the um I hated the um the leaning of the wick I did there was nothing about that wick that I liked with 6006 and it happened with whatever fragrance oil I used um trimming and not trimming the wick um, the flame just danced around too crazy. I just didn't like it. Um, and also, if <laughs> I hate single wicking. I'm just not good at it for one reason or another. So I generally buy uh, vessels that are at least three inches in diameter or larger. That way, it's easier for me to double wick and not overheat my jar. But that's a story for another time. Um, so... I hated the HTP wicks, so then I moved to the Eco wicks. Well, apparently Eco wicks are not even recommended for paraffin waxes. So I went that route anyway, and it was just something about it that just I just wasn't really a fan. Like I said earlier, I like a nice slow controlled burn. I don't want any dancing, I don't want any soot, and I want a nice almost like a quarter of an inch melt pool by four hours, if that makes any sense. Or I would, I should say by three hours, a quarter of an inch melt pool by three hours. I want it to reach the edge, of, the edge of the jar and I want it to be a quarter of an inch down by four hours. No deeper and no wider than that. Um, So I actually moved to, away from 6006 and I went to the Coco Apricot, but before I went to Coco Apricot, I was using, I started using the CDN wicks from 1617. I think I've talked about CDN wicks in one of my other videos. I swear by them. I use them for 6006, which I still have. No, those are all. So like this, this vessel has two ego twos in it but this is a, i don't remember how why the diameter is on this one but it's it, it's definitely at least three and a half i believe and these are two ego twos this works perfect for this jar however let me see some of my christmas fragrances this is a jar from oh my label's messed up oh boo this is a jar from 1617 I have paraffin, uh, the IGI 6006 also in here. And these are two CDN twos. Two CDN twos, or God, God, this candle smells amazing. <laughs> two CDN twos work great in these jars. This is the, oh man, I wish I knew the name of these jars. I will leave the name of these jars down below or the link or something. Um, in the description box so you guys can check this jar out and these wicks but two cdn twos work amazing in these vessels from 1617 with igi 6006 now who would have thunk it the cdn twos are actually recommended for vegetable waxes so who would have thought that it would have worked in paraffin so those are really the big things that i want people to consider when they're doing their own testing and when they're becoming chandlers um a lot goes into candle making. I just want people to see a different perspective and just gather their own information for themselves. Don't necessarily listen to 100% what other people are saying about their results because like I said in the beginning, your results are, I guarantee you, probably going to be different. My hot throw was amazing with my cocoa apricot um, and it wasn't with the virgin uh, coconut soy. Um, someone else said that their virgin coconut soy was amazing in two weeks and their cocoa apricot was just not so it really is all up to you and I really hope that that video helped someone kind of think outside the candle jar a little bit and um I hope that makes it easier for you to decide you know which route you're gonna go um definitely get into buying sample packs of wicks, uh, waxes. There are a ton of different candle suppliers out there. Um, I'm still finding some. I'm in a couple of these candle groups and I, I hear people posting about 
um, a company called Hive and Honey, which I actually just ordered my my coconut, um, my cocoa apricot from because my favorite supplier, 1617, has been sold out. Um, but trust me, as soon as they get back, I'm going back to 1617. Wow, I'm kind of biased. Um, but yeah, that is that, guys. And I hope it really helped someone out there. If it did, subscribe, comment, like, tell me I was wrong, tell me I was right, something. I don't know. Give me feedback. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next one.